Hey, this is Patrick McCormick with McCormick System. Just want to thank everybody for joining today. Um, real quickly, I'm just going to go over some of the differences and, and the benefits, really, of the Win 1000 versus the Win 3000. Um, going through it, I'm going to kind of fly through some of it because I want to make sure and leave some time at the end for any questions that anybody has. A uh, big thing to keep in mind is at the end of it, if you do want to get a hold of me, you have more questions, you want to hit me more one on one, um, that's the easiest way to catch me. Either call into our number right there or shoot me an email. Um, emails normally respond pretty quick unless you catch me off the phone sort of thing. But then I'll throw that back up at the end as well in case if somebody wants to, uh, to jot it down. So with the Win 1000, um, great system, more designed for the smaller contractors. Um, going through a lot of it, it's gonna have the same look and feeling and flow through it. So I'm just gonna log in real quick as my admin. And it takes us to the job screen, which again, looks very similar to the Win 1000. Uh, biggest difference here is your job limit. On the Win 1000, you're actually limited down to just having 50 jobs. Um, on the Win 3000, there's actually no limit. So that way, a couple of years go by, anything like that, you don't have to worry about backing up and archiving your jobs. You can still go back on that job history and keep up to date on what's going on out there. So I'm gonna open up that job, that 149 West Boston. I'm just gonna use that as an example going on through here. So you still get your same five steps across the top. So that was your first step, that was your job. Your second one's those labels. And this is where we're gonna see the first like visual difference. So on the Win 1000, you've got one column here with your labels and you really just work down that, breaking out your job in whatever way you want. Now on the Win 3000, we actually have three different labels. Um, that's gonna allow you to do some more breakouts, get more into the uh, project management aspect of things and really start honing in where your parts and pieces and everything are going. So that's one huge, huge benefit of it. Um, it lets you start getting really tracking or change orders and, and just assigning parts and pieces to where they should be in the first place. Now that labels directly affects your takeoff. So when I go to my third step, I've got those labels across the top now, instead of just having the one big drop down. And again, all of these, just like the 1000, are tracked directly to our audit trail. So if I'm still on my base bid and I go to Office C, now everything that I do is still under my base bid assigned to my Office C power. So if you go to a change order, you just simply hit your first drop down and flip over your change orders or your alternates. Now, on the Win 1000, you're normally used to running just one window, going through, doing your takeoff, using that menu quite a bit to go through and find your parts and pieces. Works great, but it is a lot of back and forth. Um, on the Win 3000, you can actually have three different database windows open. So you can actually come up here, hit this A2 or the, or the I2 if you want items or assemblies and you can start organizing your windows around to be preset to whatever you want. And we have a bunch of them preset for you guys. Um, to kind of show you what those are, that's actually our workspaces. So if I jump into this and I could say, hey, I wanna play with some fixtures, receptacles, cell phones and switches, and now I've got three database windows open, all assigned to three different assemblies already there for us. So now if I pull open a drawing and I start throwing something around, just like this right here, set my scale real quick. So now if I have that open, I could simply come through here and say, all right, well, I wanna start playing with my duplexes. Zoom in and start clicking away. Now this one doesn't actually have any switches for me, but just to kind of show you guys how simple that works, you click on my switches right there and I can start throwing these around. Now something to keep in mind with the Design Estimating Pro, and you can do this on the Win 1000 as well, is you can actually double click that and make it look like whatever you want. So that design build stuff becomes amazingly simple. So now my switches are switches. So now that I'm in the design estimating pro, a couple benefits here as well is right now on the Win 1000, you have one favorites window. On the Win 3000, you can have three and you can still have your 20 parts in there. So you can push that hot list down to the bottom if you want to and have three different favorites windows listed. So a lot of guys will do that and throw one for favorites devices uh, favorites miscellaneous and favorites pipe and wire or whatever you want to typically throw into your list. That way you don't ever have to go find it. It's already there for you. And if you don't know about the hot list, what the hot list is, is any part or any piece that you've previously taken off on this job is going to be here for you in case you ever need it again. Now, jumping back to our 
main app right here. Uh, we can see really the benefit of having multiple windows open, multiple, multiple assembly windows. Something on the Win 3000 that's pretty unique. Um, you can actually come down here to the audit trail itself and you can actually delete something out of the audit trail. So on the Win 1000, what you have to do is you have to come up and say, all right, devices, well, I took off six, I only want three. So you're gonna have to do a negative three. And then as a total, do a math, you would end up with three total, three overall. Well, on the Win 3000, you don't have to do that. You can just simply come here and delete that out in your set. Or you can delete something out of here like my switches and it'll actually remove it from my drawing as well. So now my switches are gone. So it's a live audit trail. It really lets you start getting into some of the customization and some of the ability to really hone in and keep your audit trail nice and clean, but still have that tracking with the date and time and what drawing it was done on. So that's really a couple of the differences going through it. Um, mentioned the labels, getting into some of those breakouts, applying that takeoff, and that really becomes beneficial when you jump into your extension. So as you guys know, when you're going through and you're getting all your reports and everything for the project itself, you're gonna come through here and you're gonna start looking at what material was taken off, what the cost is and what that labor is. Now on the Win 3000, we could break it out even more. So if I come up to my labels, I could check or uncheck whatever I don't wanna see and say I wanna focus on strictly Office A, I can do that. I could separate these out. So base bid, Office A, and I wanna see what type of systems I'm running. Go back to that material and I can see Office A, power. It's gonna cost you about 2000 in material. It's gonna take you about 80 hours. So when you look at a more of a project management aspect, you can collapse these down. And I can give you a deadline on exactly how long Office A should take broken down by my systems and tell you that for that 250 hours, there's the deadlines that you and the guys out in the field should meet. And that's just one example of it. I mean, I can come here and I could bring in my other sections of the project as well and even do something more with our cost codes. So Office A power, you've got 80 hours but you're gonna spend about 18, almost, well, just about 18 hours just putting up that trim and plates. So now you really have that deadline honed in to where and what the guys in the field should be doing. So when they come back to you and say, hey, Office A Power, you said 80 hours, it took us 100, well, we need to figure out where to make that time up at. So the Win 3000 really gets into that level of reporting and customization and tracking. When we're all done with that, just like on the Win 1000, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna send this off to our summary. Hit okay. Simply close that down and jump onto that step five. All right, so our step five, our bid summary, a lot of this here is the same. So I'm gonna go through the tabs at the bottom and everything just like normal. And in case you're not aware, you've got your base bid right here showing the caution material, which is 13,000, and you're going to be running that 342 hours for that labor. Now that's thrown right here up top. So you've got the material cost and no overhead or profit. We'll do that at the end. Labor, zeros, quotes, subs, direct job expense, and equipment. We'll fill all these out by going through these tabs at the bottom. So go to our labor. Simply grab a couple guys and just push them over to the right. So we're assigning them to the project. Not a perfect world. Everybody's turning a wrench at the same time. About 85 hours each. So that's going to cost you about 15,600 in labor. Now, everything we're doing is automatically pushed right back to here for us. So when I jump onto my quote section, I can come through and say, hey, maybe that fixture package is 10 grand. There we go. Now, again, it's tracked back to that top sheet, but I can just jump onto the next one, hit my subs. Maybe you uh, got a guy, it's gonna sock up for you. 50 bucks an hour, it's gonna take them 11 hours. Well, there's 550. Job expense, same concept, maybe 1750 on those. I showed you guys how to do some as builds, so we'll throw 550 into the little project there for us. Equipment, maybe I don't need any equipment. Actually, you know what, let's do this. I own an air compressor, so I'm gonna throw it out to the job site for a month. So a little bit of a maintenance on it in case something happens to it. We can bond a job if you ever need to, and those tax rates, those can drop in automatically for you as well. 
All right, so now back in our top sheet, we've got all these numbers here thrown in. So we know our total on this project is going to be about 43,000 is what's going to cost us. Now we got to make some money on it because we don't have any overhead or profit assigned yet. So to do that, we come right here, start with that 10% for overhead, and we're going to throw that 15% for our profit. So that just dropped 10% here and threw 15% there. Now that just brings up your total to about 54,000, making 20%, about 11 grand coming back to you guys. Now, all of that works the exact same on the Win 1000 versus the Win 3000. But again, jumping more into the management, more to the project uh, management aspect of it, you can actually start getting more information out of this system by jumping into like some of our graphs up at the top. So it's going to pop up a nice little pie chart showing you what's going on in the project. You can simply click on it. It's all interactive and see who's doing what, where they're going to be going. You can flip between your different bid packages over here on the right. Um, so there's all sorts of things you could do jumping into these graphs and really get some good reporting and everything out of it. So ultimately, overall, biggest differences between the Win 3000 and the Win 1000. Uh, you're talking the labels, getting more breakouts, more customization between them, your takeoff windows. So really the speed and accuracy of your takeoff. I mean, you're doing every part one by one, it's gonna take a lot longer than if you've got three parts. When you're really just chipping away at that time, you're cutting it down by percents every single project you do. Those workspaces kind of tags along with those multi-windows, but they're preset for you, or you can customize your own. Deleting out of the auto trail, that's one of the big ones, just because it helps keep everything clean. It makes it quick and easy to look at, know exactly what's going on. Favorites in DEP, that's one of my favorite ones out of the aspects of the upgrade, just because you've always got the common parts and pieces you're gonna use on every project. So why not have those available every project, every time and never have to look for them. Extension breakouts, again, gets more into the project management aspect, giving you some of that field uh, descriptions and really what that price and labor is going towards. And then ultimately at the end, you got the graphs, giving you the nice little overview of what's going on in those projects. So that's, Really, some of the main differences going through it. Um, obviously, there's there's more, uh, but I wanted to make sure and leave some time at the end in case there's questions, anything like that. So I'm gonna kind of hold tight for a minute. And if you guys have any questions, definitely just uh, type them on in, and I'll I'll answer them best I can. There's my information again. If if anybody wants to hit me more one on one with it, uh, but other than that, I'll just kind of hang tight for a minute or two. All right, so one question just popped on through. So one big thing to keep in mind, when you're upgrading from the Win 1000 to the Win 3000, you're not starting over. Any of your existing jobs, any of your existing anything, uh, assemblies, items, customizations, all that stuff transfers directly across with you. So you're not losing any of that information. Um, and same thing if you want to go from the Win 3000 to the Win 6000 later on. Everything will track along. So yeah, by no means are you restarting in any sort of fashion at all. All right, well, I haven't seen any other questions come through. Again, jot down my name, contact information, email, everything like that. That way, if you guys do think of one, um, just shoot me an email or give me a call. Either way it works. And uh, definitely appreciate you guys joining today and give me the opportunity to show you some of the differences between that Win 1000 and that Win 3000.